morning. Uh, welcome to Ohio State Specific Conditional Exempt for Contaminated Wipes and Apparel webinar. This rule was, has also been referred to as the textile rule. So if you've heard that, called that before, um, please know that that is the same rule. It was a lot shorter. I don't know why we didn't stick with that one. Uh, my name is Tammy McConnell. I work in the Compliance Assurance section of the Hazardous Waste Program in the Division of Environmental Response and Revitalization. I've worked in the Hazardous Waste Program since about 2001, and prior to that, I worked in the Division of Air Pollution Control for 12 years. So I've been around the agency for a couple years. I do apologize, I am getting over bronchitis, so hopefully you can hear me well, and I don't go into any coughing. <laughs> In this webinar, we will be covering why we have two wipes rules, what is considered contaminated wipes and apparel, how to comply with the exemption, who is affected, and where you can find the rule. For better clarification during this presentation, I will refer to the solvent contaminated wipes rule as the federal wipes rule and the conditional exemption for contaminated wipes and apparel rule as the state wipes rule. I apologize, I should have taken the word current out of this slide and put federal in there because now they are both actually current. Uh, the federal wipes rules are found on OAC rules 3745-5104-A26, which is the laundering part of that exclusion and 3745-5104-B18 for the disposal exclusion. These rules narrowly define a solvent contaminated wipe as shop towels, rags, pads, and swabs. We've added, we have added other items to be included in the definition under the state wipes rule. The federal wipes rule also limits the eligible contaminants. The federal rule only covers solvent contaminated wipes that contain one or more of F001 through F005 solvents listed in OAC rule 3745-5131 or the corresponding P or U listed solvents found in OAC rule 3745-5133. It does not include the eight RICRA metals. The state specific rule does not limit the solvents to that list and includes the eight RICRA metals. You can find a list of the contaminants on our guidance document, which is called Management of Solvent Contaminated Wipes and Other Textiles Laundered for Reuse. It's very long. Um, we put both of those rules on one guidance document to help you compare the two. Um, there is reference to this at the end of the presentation. Since we added to the definition of what is considered a wipe and we don't have the limits on eligible contaminants, the state wipes rules provides greater flexibility. The new rule also addresses contaminated wipes and apparel that do not fit in the definition under the federal exclusion. The state wipes rule clarifies that the contaminated wipes and apparel that are laundered and returned to use are exempt provided the conditions of the exemption are met. Some examples of what falls under the state wipes rule are rags, gloves, uniforms, drop cloths, smocks, coveralls, and mops. As you can see, uh, this list encompasses more than the definition in the federal rule. Criteria for it to be considered a contaminated wipe or apparel are it must have been contaminated with hazardous constituents through use, meaning you can't just decide to dump hazardous waste on a pile of rags to absorb the waste. Um, it must meet the definition of a hazardous waste, and you must intend for the wipes and apparel to be laundered and returned to use. And when they are accumulated, stored, and transported, they must be contained in a non-leaking closed container.
As I mentioned, there are certain conditions you must meet in order to be eligible for the exclusion. These include that the contaminated wipes or apparel are not burned for energy recovery, used to produce a fuel or is contained in fuels, used in a manner constituting disposal, used to produce products that are applied to the land, mixed with a hazardous waste after use, contaminated with acute hazardous waste, or otherwise exempt from regulation. So there's a hierarchy between these two rules, between the federal and the state rule. If the wipes already fall under the federal solvent contaminated wipes exemption under OAC 374551-04A26, you must use that exemption. You can't pick and choose which exemption you're going to use um, for these wipes. Continuing on with the conditions, the generator shall do one of the following. Ensure the containment wipes and apparel or container contain no free liquids at the point of being sent for cleaning. Develop and implement a written procedure to ensure that the wipes and apparel contain no free liquids when placed in the container and that no free liquids are added or that, uh, to that container or maintain a written explanation as to why no free liquids will occur in the container. You only have to do one of those. The last three conditions are make sure that the wipes and apparel are, on, are only contaminated, make sure that the wipes and apparel that are only contaminated with used oil shall contain no visible free flowing used oil and that the contaminated wipes and apparel are cleaned on site or sent to a laundry or cleaning facility that is subject to the Clean Air Act. Anyone who currently generates contaminated wipes and apparel that are hazardous and has them laundered at commercial laundries or dry cleaners or launders them on site are affected by this rule. You can find these rules under Ohio Administrative Code Rule 3745-5106-A-3-E. E. They are posted on our Rules and Laws webpage under the Effective tab. And you can uh, also find information about it on the guidance document I referred to earlier. Um, and that's it. Do we have any questions? I do want to clarify, apparently I said Clean Air Act rather than Clean Water Act for the launder, um, they do not have to comply with the, well, I mean, they do have to comply with the Clean Air Act, but the exemption is that the laundry or cleaning facility uh, are subject to the Clean Water Act. Sorry about that. Okay, our first question is, uh, do these wastes count towards generator status? No, according to Ohio Administrative Code Rule 3745-5105C1, when making a quantity determination, if your waste is exempt from regulation under paragraphs A3 of Rule 3745-5106, you do not have to include that in your waste determination. Okay, what if I spray the solvent on the rag to wipe, wipe off oil? As I mentioned in the webinar, if as long as it is being contaminated through use, it meets the exemption, and that would be considered through use. Can I launder the rags I generate myself? Yes, as long as the wastewater discharge is regulated under the Clean Water Act. And is there satellite accumulation with this rule? No, there's no satellite accumulation. You just have the 180 days to launder the wipes and apparel. So how do I know if my vendor who launders the uniforms is allowed to accept uniforms? Do I need to tell the vendor that the uniforms may have contacted solvent? You can ask your launderer if they are um, subject to the Clean Water Act uh, to make sure that you're sending it to the right, to the proper people. Um, they may want to know that it has contacted solvent, so you may want to tell them. I, we don't have anything that you have to tell them. So you just want to make sure that 
that what they do is uh, that their discharge is going through the Clean Water Act. I mean, you know. Okay, if prior to shipment you find free liquids in the container with the textiles and remove the free liquids, am I able to ship off the textiles for laundry under the exemption? Yes, you are still allowed to ship the textiles off for laundry under the exemption. However, the liquids that you have that you get out of that container, you do have to evaluate to determine if it's hazardous waste or not. 